may we know what is our destination? How can we know our goal? Your goal? Mm. The destination, inshallah, is Allah Allah's satisfaction, ridan satisfaction. And that defined with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad The goal is always the same, is to make Allah happy, to arrive in paradise, and Ashikin come and teach that to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and to ask to be in service to Sayyidina Muhammad is the highest. So instead of where we're destination is what is the purpose of our life? What is our role in each individual person's role on if they to reach what would they have promised Allah of their role and that's why they take the hand of the tariqah because that's the first step in the completion with their bayat in the heaven. When Allah Laspi Rabbikum muqalu bala, am I not your Lord? And we all said, yes. And we came to earth and then we began to lie. And Allah said, did you promise that? No, I never promised that. Were you going to support him if you saw him? No, I never said I was going to support him. Were you going to follow like this? No, I never said this. And so the dunya became the abode of, of lying. When we follow the tariqahs, the first step in accomplishing that is that you found the shaykhs. So as soon as you found the shaykhs, you took your bayat, you took your allegiance. So that to what the words of the allegiance is that to complete your ahad and your covenant with Allah That's why in the beginning of our journey is Surah Tawbah. And Surah Tawbah is all about the covenant in which they promised Allah They sold their dunya and Allah bought the, their dunya from them and gave them akhirah in exchange. And that they came and they completed their bayat and their, their covenant with Allah How can you complete a covenant with Allah if you don't have the hand of Allah with you? Right? So the bayat is the words that are exact. Allah's hand is upon the hand of Sayyidina Muhammad So then where is your hand in relation to the hand of Prophet So the bayad is that enacting, is that I want my hand on the hand of the shaykhs, their hand with the hand of Prophet and Allah sealing the covenant that His hand is upon all of them for them to complete their covenant. So it's the first step. If the people are not in tariqah, how could they be completing the covenant with Allah when their hand not even on the hand of Prophet So that's the first step. As soon as they follow the turuqs, then all of the teaching is meant to bring the person's nafs down and make their connection with the world of light. As the light begins to enter into the heart, you'll be given more and more of these lights. With that light you begin to understand what your role in this existence is and what your purpose is. Your purpose is not the particle and it's not the seed. It's like asking well, if a bunch of seeds got together and, and they asked the, the farmer, what am I? All the seeds could speak. Big seed is avocado. This, this small seed is rose bush, this seed is… A, but how can a farmer describe to seeds what they are? Because they look at each other and they say, I don't know what you're talking about, we're, we're all just seeds. But Allah has a miracle for them that if they plant themselves, negate themselves, dissolve themselves, always something comes more beautific. Anytime you surrender yourself entirely to Allah Allah raised you to be more beautific. And he says, look all around you I'm doing that, why I would torture you? Every tree was once a seed and look now it's such a beautiful tree with thousands of fruits, now benefiting everybody but the seed is of no benefit to anyone. So we see the signs all around us of what we're talking about. But insan is, 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 is difficult to deal with. Because the egos say, no, no, not going to be planted, not going to dissolve, I don't believe that I'm going to be something more beautific and that becomes the struggle, inshaAllah. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. <coughs> Wa alaikum salam rahmatullah. What to do if one feels numbness and harshness of heart? Numbness and harshness of heart. Making lots of salawats, again the tafakkur, the contemplation. Because it can be a numbness or anger from the world, from people. And again that's why all of these knots and these recitations, they're deep into that. That uh, we know from the, the Farsi poetry is all about that. That I see the smiles of people's faces but I see a khanjar behind them. That I see they have a knife behind them. And this is their whole understanding of dunya that uh, everybody has a kind word but they got some knives behind them with a different plan. But we understood that and we don't put much value in, in, in people. Our love and ishq is for Allah and our life and service is for Allah's rida and satisfaction. Try not to serve and do things for people to be happy with you and to get something back from people because they always disappoint you. So the lesson in tariqah was always that what we do, we do for Allah Then everybody to their place. When we don't live our life for the focus of people and then we become disappointed when they don't act and react the way we want, then life becomes very sad abode because you put all your chips on the wrong reality. But when you find out later in life that people they are not going to change, they are who they are but your love should be for Allah And Allah's love, to gain Allah's love is the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And as a result of that correct love everything else is of a lesser importance. And you love them but the love supreme is for the Divine. Then your actions are for that reality, for Allah's satisfaction. You think that a shaykh could become a shaykh if he's asking approval from his family? Oh, I think we're going to do this, I think we're going to move here, I think we're going to build this. No, they don't work with family and they don't work with the board of directors. They work for Allah They don't care the family likes it, they don't like it, they come, they come, they don't come, they don't come. Because Allah says, that life is a fitna for you. If you're going to ask them everything, how are you going to achieve what Allah wants? That's why when you follow the shaykhs, they follow what Allah wants. If people want to come behind and follow, alhamdulillah. If they don't, they march alone. Alhamdulillah. But if you try to satisfy the lives of people then that's, that's a different game because they're going to weigh everybody down. They say, no shaykh, have you ever been to these board meetings? We want to do a mawlid. Ninety-nine percent of these masjids are board of directors. We want to do a mawlid. Oh well let us ask the board of directors. My goodness, are they sitting up there with Allah Allah ordering us to praise upon Prophet your board is going to be what, secondary to that? So they meet in heaven and ask Allah? Tariqah is not like that. What board of directors? There is a zalim person and he says, no, or he's rightly guided and says, definitely we do the mawlid. So it means life can't be based on asking the, the consensus of people, so you didn't put much weight into that. So the tariqah is about building your connection. When your connection is there, the fires is there, then samina wa ta'ana that we heard the command and we are following it. Who follows, follows. Who doesn't follow then alhamdulillah. Whether friend or foe or family doesn't make a difference for them, inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. How to be able to connect with the shaykh without creating a false imaginative bond? <clears throat> Keeping the adab, that you keep your adab, that this is not about love, this is not about any sort of bizarre understanding. This is about an adab in which to sit with all respect, that fill my heart with your light, and that my bad character, I want to take a hisab, um, these are the bad things that I'm doing and don't ask to see the face, just feel that you're in that presence and that please send your fires and your light into my heart, please fill your, my heart with light. So as you're doing that you're keeping that adab and then you keep the adab of the, the difference in the separation of the character. 
So because the connection is strong with the shaykh, I don't joke around with the shaykh. That spiritual connection was a spiritual connection. All my life was then to keep the adab of the relationship with the shaykh and never to cross that boundary. So it means all of this reality is based on, a, is based on etiquette and what type of etiquette we keep so that shaitan doesn't play in our mind. And as a result we keep practicing, practicing and then see if we have the good character. Are we controlling the anger? Then this fayaz is, is real. Are we supporting and the support? Somebody says, oh I don't have money to donate, I don't have money to donate. You have a finger. So this is not about that but if you're making a lot of money then you owe a lot of support. But the people who are not making it, everyone can support, you have a finger. Take your finger on the website, go to one of the articles, say share and then share it onto Facebook. Go and find where there's a big group on WhatsApp and share into the WhatsApp group. Go into Telegram and there's groups with 30,000 people, join them huck, and start sharing the shaykh's videos. They may ban you and throw you out, <laughs> right? But everybody has a finger, there's no way that, that somebody… They, when Prophet was preparing for, for battle, they were getting their horses and armory. And they were coming to Prophet and said, we don't have, we don't have money for, for armory and, and for, for a horse. So it doesn't matter, come with whatever you have. And then the companions who were wealthy, they were jumping in and buying them all their armory. But there was no one have excuse, say, sorry I can't join you this week, I've got no shoes. No, there was a responsibility somebody else to buy the shoes. And then they all moved and that was frightening for people because they had such a love and ishq for Prophet So imagine now if you have a thousand, this broadcast is at 350 people, immediately jumps up to 2,000 once everybody starts waking up. 2,000 people sharing the stream on 2,000 different platforms, means hundreds of thousands of people will see that Muhammadan haqqaiq, that dhikr, that, that association. So there's so many ways, it's just people have to have a want to get up, support, make their faith to be real, to be active, to participate, that's a sign of love. That was last night's talk, that when you say you love something but yet we don't do anything for it, that's not much about love. Love is something that you, you, you live, die, blood and sweat for, inshaAllah. Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, we are in Pakistan, sometime we watch the broadcast in the evening. Mm -hmm. Is watching later the same as watching live for barakah? Sure, no problem. Their reality is timeless. That's why you have timeless reality. <laughs> hmm? If you read that you understand <laughs> that what they're talking about is not bound by time. We, we describe, was it live or are we talking ourselves? That what was the voice that the companions heard of the voice of Sayyidina Muhammad You know why you can't hear Prophet Because your soul doesn't have the ability to contain that. With what power you're talking about the one whom speaks Qur'an from Allah's uncreated oceans, you don't have the ability to even hear the voice of Prophet then imagine these awliya whom are immensely connected to that reality, that their entire light was transferred into that reality, Sultan and awliya. So if you listen to Shaykh Dagestani's voice, what type of power does that have? You know that we have on YouTube, we have Shaykh Dagestani's voice talking and just keep listening to it and meditating, listening to it. Then there's thousands of hours of Shaykh Nazim's voice whom immensely powerful, the secret of Allah's rahmah, you know, the one whom in seclusions and the face of Prophet upon this dunya and then you sit and meditate and hear the sound, that sound, its vibration into your soul can't be too, can't be understood, there's nothing like it. Just from the sound of it continuously emanating within your ears and within your soul, means they have no time, these are not times reality. When you watch and hear from these teachings and the teachings of the shaykhs, they are timeless. They have an energy that continuously moving.
whether you click now, you click 10 years from now, you click 10 minutes from now, that energy is there. And you want to always watch it at a time in which you're conscious, everything's okay. Because if it's too late for you and it's like 2 in the morning you're passing out but you're, you're not conscious of what's being taught, you're not conscious of what's being said, then better rest and watch it when you're nice, you have your coffee, you're ready to go, put some nice headphones. We said, you want to really experience the tariqah and the zikr, get yourself a nice headphone. And as a result of putting a headphone you don't hear all the screaming, the background, all the th- agitation in the house, you put your headphones on and you listen. And you meditate that my heart is there right now in that association regardless of the time. Because you can listen to Shaykh Nazim, he's in, where is he? Look, oh look he looks there and I'm close my eyes and see myself right in the middle of that association looking at him. And meditating to his speech and that he's talking to me, inevitably you'll begin to see Shaykh Nazim in front of you. Their power is immense, the power that Allah gave to them is immense. So the vibration of his sound is now moving into you, moving into you. You hear his mannerisms and how he talks, his lahja, his his accent and how he talks, you hear it, you understand it. So when you're listening to the sobats, then in your dreams or in other vision that may come to you, you begin to hear him speaking to you with his accent. That means now they're facilitating a connection into your soul and into your being to dress you and to bless you. So imagine then what sahabi were dressed with because they could hear Prophet So it means then Allah left these as an immense barakah upon this earth to hear their speech, to follow these, these realities, to be dressed by their realities. There, there are no two like it. Its dress is very unique, its reality is immensely unique and all to draw us to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzati Amma Yasifoon. Salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha. <laughs>